All right, everyone. Well, here we go. Welcome to the Mrs. New York America, Mrs. New York American, and Miss New York for America pageants. I'm your host, Diane Hargrove, and I'd like to introduce Josh Shapiro. He is actually getting set up right now, and he will be singing our national anthem. So place your hands over your heart, and let's hear it for Josh Shapiro. And Josh, yeah, there we go. Marjorie Vale, Mrs. Brooklyn America 2020. I've been married to my husband Roman for 17 years and together we have two children, Angel Baby Alexei and Emilian, soon to be 14 years old. Professionally, I'm a literacy coach and sometimes I moonlight as a licensed esthetician. My hobbies are that I enjoy traveling, I love to read and I absolutely love to learn. I like to say that my platform chose me when 15 years ago our son was born still. That's why I've collaborated with Star Legacy Foundation to not only raise money for research, but to also support families as they go through their tragic loss. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Jackie Berry, Mrs. Dutchess County, a cognitive scientist, a Fulbright scholar, and someone that wants to help everyone become the best version of themselves. My platform is Find Your Carrot, so I can help people find their reward that can get them through to the other side in times of uncertainty such as these. I'm so excited to be here competing, and I cannot wait to shine my light as the next Mrs. New York America. Thank you. Mrs. New York America. Hi everyone, I'm your current Mrs. Electric City, Kate Boydston. My husband Chris and I will be celebrating our fifth year wedding anniversary in just a few short weeks. We have a son who will be three and a fur baby who is six. My platform, Be Kind, is important to me as a special education teacher for children on the spectrum. I can see how kindness, inclusivity, a nurturing nature, and being dependable can be imperative to our children's futures. To our Hi everyone, I'm Sheila McKinney, Mrs. Empire State. Today I've taken you to Central Park because this is one of my most favorite places in New York. And I wanted to share this beautiful day, this glorious park with you. My husband Scott and I have been married for 21 years. We have two beautiful children, Justin and Alexa. And we just adopted a new baby pug named Meatball as part of the family. Professionally, I'm a certified public accountant and risk manager with a penchant for teaching financial literacy. 10 years ago, I partnered with a group called WISE. WISE stands for Working in Supportive Education because I wanted to bring my passion for teaching financial literacy to the classrooms and to Capitol Hill. Some of my important accomplishments include writing curriculum for kids from K to 12, becoming a pro bono teacher, and being instrumental in getting financial literacy added to the No Child Left Behind bill. I believe that a solid financial literacy education is as fundamental as reading, writing, and arithmetic. Writing. Hi, I'm Monta MJ Shlopowski, and I am your Mrs. Gotham City. Early on, I was taught that being in a position to give back was a privilege. As we step into our rarefied new normal, as in the wake of this pandemic, my focus will continue to be on feeding our displaced and hungry. In the United States alone, 37 million are facing food security issues. I will continue my efforts to donate and volunteer with various food banks on a local and national level and with charities like God's Love We Deliver. Indeed, it will be a privilege to support these worthy causes. Hello everyone, my name is Yasmin Berkenridge and I am Mrs. Greater New York. My husband Joseph and I have been married for 10 years and together we have a sweet little girl named Sage. My family and I migrated from the Virgin Islands to New York when I was nine years old. I attended college on a Division I track and field scholarship where I obtained my political science degree. I thereafter attended law school and recently started a legal consulting firm. My platform, hashtag, confidence comes from within focuses on academic and professional programs for young adults and children who are experiencing economic hardships. Married eight years to my husband Joseph, mother of three boys, Nathaniel, Cameron, and Tristan, and our Morky Achilles. I earned my MBA and currently work in the executive search industry, focusing on the board director and CEO levels. Part of the 7% O negative population who can donate blood universally and passionate about blood donation awareness, my 30 plus years of pageantry experience have afforded me the qualifications to apply for the job of Mrs. New York America today. I am Mrs. Long Island, Dominique Dixon. Hi, I'm Jessica Fabus Chang, Mrs. Metropolitan America 2020. I am the loving wife to Dan and a brand new mommy to 10 week old baby Chloe. I have always believed in standing up for those that need a voice. This has led me to become a nurse advocate for the Duchenne muscular dystrophy community. My platform, Mission to End Duchenne, was inspired by the resilient families that I've had the honor to know throughout my advocacy journey. It is my mission to help those families to find their voice, tell their personal stories, and be advocates that influence the world. Together, we will end Duchenne. Hello everyone, my name is Katie Flaherty, Mrs. Onondaga County. My husband Will and I just celebrated our 11th wedding anniversary. We are the proud parents of three perfect fur babies, Bianca, Bernice, and Vinny. Professionally, I'm a health and benefits specialist with Paychex Insurance Agency, as well as CEO and founder of Shine with Courage Foundation. 
I chose my platform, Heal, Empower, Reclaim, because I believe that nobody should suffer in silence while overcoming trauma. My mission is to provide patient advocacy and public education while giving others the courage to shine. I'm Gabby Wright in this capital district, and this is the Central Park Rose Garden located in the center of Schenectady. It's a gorgeous, fragrant garden that has over 4,000 rose bushes, a majestic fountain behind me, and calming streams. And this quiet sanctuary is completely different from the hustle and bustle of New York City, where I'm currently completing my MBA and working full time as an HR human resource coordinator at Omnicom Health Group. And I played college lacrosse and I continue to stay fit by going on long hikes and long runs. And when I'm not working, I love to hang out with my friends and go shopping. Thanks. Hello, my name is Amy Burmaster and I am your Miss Empire State for America. Born in Schenectady, going to college in Syracuse and now living in Brooklyn, I've always considered myself to be a New York girl. When asked, I describe myself as tenacious, caring, and genuine in character. I have a passion for travel, staying active, modeling, and most importantly, creating inclusive communities. To quote Dr. Seuss's The Lorax, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Turn, I am your Miss Fairport for America 2020. I am running with a platform called Clearing the Air and it is all about the fight to stop the stigma of lung cancer as well as share some tips so that you don't get lung cancer, hopefully. Um, this was chosen to honor the memory of my late grandma, Susan Cummings, who we lost last May. In my free time, I can be found messing around in my room with SFX makeup, terrorizing my cats, or spending time with my friends. Hello everyone, my name is Cassie Paradise, Miss Heart of New York for America 2020. I'm a senior nursing student at Wagner College and I live at home on Staten Island with my mom, my dad, and my cat Bentley. And I'm also a certified medical assistant. My platform is Remember Me, Coping and Caring for Dementia in honor of my grandmother, Angelina. Angelina wants you to remember to live in every moment because moments create memories and memories are all that we have. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Alexandra Sprague, Miss New York City 2020. I currently reside in Brooklyn, where I work as an occupational therapist in a special education school. I'm the proud dog mom of four-month-old golden doodle, Maggie, and I'm a graduate of Ithaca College, where I received my master's degree in occupational therapy. I chose my platform because as an occupational therapist, I see the lack of inclusion every day of people with disabilities. And I believe that this population should have equal access to everything life has to offer. Great job, ladies. <laughs> and can I remind all of you to change your, to meet yourself. So please meet yourself and also change your view to speak your view. Well, it's my pleasure to see all of you today on Zoom as the search continues for the women who will represent New York at nationals later this year in Las Vegas. The owners of Mrs. America and Mrs. World organizations, David and Elaine Marmel, created this prestigious organization over 40 years ago, and it just becomes stronger each year as it expands its commitment to excellence. One year ago, Kate Schneider was crowned Mrs. New York America, and Emily Mahana crowned Miss New York for America. Their beauty, intelligence, commitment to this organization have made them an inspiration during their year of service. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. New York America 2019 and Kate Schneider and Miss New York for America 2019, Emily Mahana. Hi. So, hi. So um, I'd like to ask a question from each of you. Kate, what was the highlight of your year? Oh my gosh, Diane, there were so many highlights to this year. And first of all, I'm just in complete denial that it's already coming to an end. I just had the most incredible time being the New York Queen and had so many incredible opportunities to raise funds and awareness for my platform of childhood health, wellness, and nutrition. I have to say one of the most fun events that I had the chance to take a part of was for the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. 
they had a fundraiser in the Adirondack Extreme Park. So I was up in the trees, about 60 feet in the air, swinging from tree to tree, going through all kinds of obstacles, and at the same time raising funds and awareness and just making uh, as much of a difference as I can in the lives of as many children as I can. So it's just been an incredible year. Thank you so much, Kate. What about you, Emily, our very first Miss New York for America? What was the highlight of your year? Like Kate said, there are just really too many to say. It's been an amazing year and an extra few months that Kate and I were lucky to have. Um, it's, it's been a pleasure advocating for my platform to empowering women in STEM. It's just something that means so much to me as an engineer and being able to travel pretty much every region of this, this state this year. It's been amazing to interact with children and, and young girls especially and see how excited they get when we do math and science activities. So um, to all my sister queens out there, it's been a pleasure um, having this year with you. And thanks again to Kate and Diane for such a nice year. Oh, thank you so much, Kate and Emily. You both are be such a tough act to follow. We love you so much. Thank you for everything. Thank you. I love you too. <laughs> Well, yesterday, the contestants met with our prestigious panel of judges in a private interview via Zoom. The judges evaluated their poise, intelligence, and conversational abilities. Each judge scored every contestant individually, and their personal interview counted for 50% of each contestant's total score. Kate, Emily, and I will now introduce our star-studded panel of judges. Hello, everybody. I would like to introduce judge number one, Dr. Caroline Verkike. Dr. Caroline Verkike was born in Kenya and now lives in the U.S. with her husband, and together they have six children. She is an inspirational speaker, life coach, and also the CEO and founder of Voice of Our Child, an organization that offers mentorship to kids 6 to 17 years old in the hope of reducing the rate of suicide in our youth. She's also the CEO of Water Gap Africa Safaris, a tour company that offers unique safaris to Kenya to provide clean water and school supplies to poor families. She's also the president of WLIN, Women Leaders International Networking for Climate, an organization that helps women network around the world, a trustee for World Women Leading Change, a movement that empowers leading businesswomen to create changes that impacts their families. She's also a former Mrs. Kenya World, She's a contestant coordinator for Mrs. America, Mrs. World, and also one of their chief negotiators for Mrs. World. Caroline loves meeting new people, public speaking, gardening, and sewing. Please welcome Caroline Verkite. Okay, and before Emily starts, I'm just going to mute all. So Emily, if you can just um, unmute yourself, that'd be great. There we go. All righty. All right. I have uh, the pleasure to introduce judge number two, Mary Therese Friel. Mary Therese Friel is a former Miss USA, Ford model, national spokesperson, author, host, celebrity, coordinator, coach, producer, agent, entrepreneur, and Goodwill ambassador. Her vast expertise is backed by 50 years of professional experience. In 1987, Mary Therese founded the Mary Therese Friel LLC, a full-service modeling agency with, complete, with a complete training program. For 33 years now, her company has been representing professional models and actors and providing Upstate New York's best training in the areas of modeling, acting, pageantry, and self-development. Mary Therese enjoys spending time with her family, serving at her church, horseback riding and skiing with her wonderful husband, Kent. The couple has been happily married for 24 years and live on a farm in Menden with their many rescued and adopted pets. Ladies and gentlemen, our judge number two, Mary Therese Briel. Judge number three, Kang Lee. Kang Lee is a Vietnamese American fashion designer and runway director. Kang Lee was established in 2015, and he has been featured in over 40 fashion events internationally, including New York Fashion Week and Philadelphia Fashion Week. He has also worked with producers from Project Runway, Philadelphia Fashion Week, and Harper's Bazaar Magazine. He is also a casting director for several fashion events, including New York Fashion Week and Stitch New York, hosted at Times Union Center at, in Albany, the Ronald McDonald House while traveling all across the country as a runway coach. Please welcome Kate Lee. 
Ladies and gentlemen, judge number four is Christiana DiNardo. Christiana DiNardo is a 2019 business honors graduate from St. John Fisher College in New York. Christiana is a former national title holder for the Miss Teen America organization. Christiana is an international model represented by Icon Toronto, MMG New York, and other state modeling agencies. She has been a model for Fashion Week of Rochester since the age of 16, a finalist in the Giovanni It Girl competition, and a print and social media model for multiple international brands. Christiana was a finalist for two consecutive years at the Miss New York Teen USA pageant. And Christiana's mother is a former Mrs. New York America, Jeannie DiNardo Vito. Christiana believes that authenticity is the core value of being true to one's purpose and values. These are the daily practices of letting go of who we think we should be and embracing who we are. Ladies and gentlemen, Christiana DiNardo. Next, we have judge number five, Lorette Arends. Mrs. America 2002, Lorette Arends has raised thousands of dollars for Victoria's Voice through directing the Mrs. Maryland America pageant since 2004. She and her husband, Dave, host Heroes Talk Radio, HTR, a national financial radio program. As a certified behavioral financial advisor, Lorette combines her BA in psychology and MA in communications with sound retirement planning principles. She also trains financial advisors throughout the country on how to explain and offer the safe investing solutions discussed on HTR. These wealth coaches teach listeners about the solutions discussed in Lorette's book, The Raft Strategy, your retirement approach free of tax and other safe investing secrets. She is the proud mother of seven and grandma to 16. Lorette and Dave reside in Cape Coral, Florida. Please welcome our judge number five, Lorette Arnes. Thank, thank you. Judge number six, Aisha Williamson. Aisha Williamson is the owner and director of May Today, Inc., making a difference everywhere. Aisha is Mrs. Georgia America 2014. As a life coach, Aisha has a passion for helping others and guiding them to achieve goals and aspirations. Aisha is also a motivational and public speaker. She's a former NFL professional cheerleader from the Carolina Panthers and Atlanta Falcons. Aisha obtained her bachelor's degree in psychology from Norfolk State University. Also holds, holds a master's degree in human resources management and is anticipating her PhD in management soon. She is an active, an active member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Inc., board member of ICE for Life, foundation spokesperson for the Susan G. Komen and dance teacher and choreographer. She enjoys spending time with her love, Trent, adorable daughter, Nika Lynn, and puppy, Gabby. Please welcome Aisha Williamson. And if we can change this to, Vicki, if we can change this to speaker view. It's actually not my screen. Um, Lisa, could you please take off screen share? Lisa, can you please take off screen share? There we go. <laughs> okay, if everyone can do speaker view, that would be great. Thank you. Please join me in recognizing our auditor, Peter Barella from RDG and Partners CPA in Pittsburgh, New York. Thank you, Peter. Auditor Peter. And thank you to our star-studded official panel of judges and amazing auditor, Peter Barella. All right. Now, Vito, our videographer, will share the next exciting segment. He's put together the contestants' swimwear pre-recorded videos. These women have taken on a tremendous <laughs> talent for the prestigious pageant titles at stake tonight. I can certainly remember the nervous excitement that they are now experiencing when I competed last year. This is the 43rd anniversary of the Mrs. America pageant, and swimwear has always been a part of the event. The judges use this piece of competition to further evaluate each contestant's commitment to health, fitness, and confidence. We may be virtual this year, but it takes a tremendous amount of confidence to engage an audience in swimsuit. Remember that this portion of the competition counts for 25% of each contestant's total score. 
Let's meet them now and learn a little bit more about each of our ladies. Mrs. Brooklyn Marjorie Vail and her husband Roman have been married for 17 years and have one son, Emilian, and angel baby, Alexei. In her free time, she enjoys traveling around the world, reading, brunching with friends, meeting with her book club, and public speaking. Marjorie is a lifelong learner. She is a licensed esthetician with two master's degrees and currently working on her third in education leadership working on her third in education leadership. Mrs. Duchess County, Dr. Jackie Berry and husband Chris just celebrated their 20th wedding anniversary. They have one child, a son named Gray and a guinea pig named Gimli. Dr. Jackie produces local television shows as a hobby and recently launched a live call-in series for her platform, Find Your Carrot. Inspired by the coronavirus crisis, Find Your Carrot helps people to find their personal currency and grow underground during times of uncertainty. Mrs. Electric City Kate Boydston and her husband have been married for five years in just a few short weeks. They have an active son named Hudson and a fur baby named Sam. Kate is a special education teacher for children on the spectrum. She is currently helping create a reopening plan for students with disabilities in her district. She enjoys volunteering her time toward helping others understand how to create a more inclusive environment in schools. She enjoys gardening, baking, and crafting in her spare time. Sheila McKinney, Mrs. Empire State, and her husband Scott celebrated their 21st wedding anniversary in February. In her spare time, Sheila supports several charities, including one that she founded over 20 years ago called Shelly Smile, in memory of her first husband who died suddenly. Her experiences as a widow led her to become a CPA and to, and to her passion of teaching financial literacy and feeding those in need. She is a spokesperson and a diamond volunteer for a group called Working in Support of Education, or WISE, whose mission is to ensure that students receive a financial literacy education. She is an active volunteer for Feeding America and Long Island Cares. In her 20s, she became a triathlete and marathon runner to control her addiction to carbs. And she is happy to report that so far, it's been working, even in quarantine. Mrs. Gotham City, Monta M.J. Jabowski, and her husband Mark have been married for one and a half years. MJ's passion for nutrition and wellness coincides with her embarking on a full scholarship training program to receive her IFC accredited holistic coaching certification. She has made numerous TV appearances on the Dr. Oz show on anti-aging and food segments. MJ seeks to empower women of her generation. 60 is the new 30. Mrs. Greater New York, Yasmin Gums Breckenridge, has been married to Joseph for 10 years and together they have a beautiful daughter named Sage. Yasmin is a published international bridal model for Jana Ann Couture and can be seen modeling at the Nod Couture Show in New York City. She was recently interviewed by Style360 during the Garrow Sparrow from Project Runway New York Fashion Week show about her fashion style and community service involvement. Yasmin is a former Division I track and field athlete for the University of New Orleans and a NCAA Leadership Conference finalist based on demonstrating leadership and community service involvement. Mrs. Long Island has been married to her college sweetheart, Joseph, that's me, for eight years. They share three sons, ages nine months, two years, and seven years, and an 11-year-old Morky. The Dixons call Huntington, Long Island their home. 
She graduated magna cum laude from Long Island University and earned her MBA from Drexel University. She is an executive search professional and Jenny Craig National Success Story Contest winner and ambassador. She enjoys pursuing entrepreneurial endeavors, screenwriting, managing her son's modeling career, event planning, reading, athletics, and traveling. This is Dominique Dixon. Jessica Fabus Chang, Mrs. Metropolitan. Jessica and Dan have been married for three and a half wonderful years and just had their first child, a beautiful baby girl, in May. Jessica is a registered nurse and specializes in the operating room. It was here that she found her love for patient advocacy. It is also where she got her nickname, the Surgical Ninja. She has the uncanny ability to catch objects like Daniel's son, who, if you remember, caught a fly with chopsticks in the Karate Kid. A black belt herself, Jessica enjoys the challenge of martial arts and strives to be her best self. She is Jessica Fabus Chang, Mrs. Metropolitan. She is Jessica. Mrs. Onondaga County, Katie Flaherty and her husband Will have been married for 11 years. They are the proud parents of three perfect fur babies, Bianca, Bernice, and Vinny. In her free time, she enjoys the energy of Zumba class, a relaxing swim in the pool, and the noise pins make when she tries to get a strike in bowling. Her special talent is playing the violin. Miss Capital District for America, Gabrielle Wright, is busy completing her Master's in Business Administration and working full-time as a Human Resources Coordinator. Gabby enjoys travel and jumped at the chance to study a semester in England. In her spare time, she loves to hike the trails of the Adirondacks and pick apples at her favorite orchards. Miss Capital District for America, Gabrielle Wright. Please give a warm welcome to Miss Empire State for America, Amy Burmaster. Amy has loved travel since a young age and has now visited almost all 50 states. With only three more to go, she hopes to see them all before turning 25. In her free time, Amy loves to cook new foods, sing in her car, and spend as much time as possible visiting her dog, Benji. A self-proclaimed people person, she's happiest hosting a group game night or exploring the great outdoors with her friends. Miss Fairport, Lexi, has six pets at home, two dogs and four cats. She loves musicals. Her favorite musical is Six, which is based on the Six Wives of Henry VIII. She loves history, and her favorite historical figures are Anne Boleyn, Catalina de Aragon, Grania de Mali, and Frida Kahlo. She's on the autism spectrum and enjoys spending time in the local cemeteries with her friends. Lexi would love to own her own eco-friendly funeral home someday as she wants to go to school to become a funeral director when she finishes her theater degree. She also plays fiddle, sings, and dances. Miss Heart of New York for America, Cassie Paradise, enjoys dancing with 20 years experience in many different genres and has found a new love of kickboxing to keep fit and strong. She has a twin brother, enjoys spending time with her friends, and loves to meet new people. She also bakes the best brownies. Cassie has raised over $10,000 for various charities throughout the Staten Island community. Miss Heart of New York for America is an avid beach lover, and in her free time, she loves to spend time with her grandmother, Angelina, reciting her favorite nursery rhymes and singing her grandmother's favorite songs, keeping a bright, beautiful smile on her face. Miss New York City, Alexandra Sprague. Alexandra was captain of her college cheerleading team, where she helped bring Ithaca College to NCA Nationals every year. In her free time, Alexandra enjoys traveling, attending Broadway shows, and hiking. Alexandra recently welcomed a golden doodle puppy, Maggie, into her heart and is training her to become a therapy dog. All right. Amazing. Hi, amazing Mrs. New York America formers who are tuned in today watching the pageant live 
I would love to go down the list and say everyone's name and invite you all to introduce yourself and say a little something, uh, maybe some words of encouragement for the contestants today. So I'm going to start with 1996, Jeannie, and then there's 2002, Lisa, 2003 is Missy, 2005, we have Stephanie, 2008, Carrie Lynn, 2009, Nicole, 2013, Haisha, 2015 is Jessica, 2016, Allison, and 2018, Patty. So if any of you ladies would love to say hi, introduce yourselves, and give some advice to the contestants, that would be great. And these are the former Mrs. New Yorks. Is anyone on? Missy? Anyone? Hi. Hi, Missy. Hi. Hi, girls. It's make, sure, make sure everyone's on speaker view so you can all see Missy Briscoe. Hi, girls. I was Mrs. New York America 2003. I am so impressed by everybody's video. This has been awesome. They've all been great. You girls did such a great job. You all need to give yourselves a round of applause. I can't wait to see evening wear and how the live questions are gonna go. And uh, I'm just enjoying it myself here on my couch. <laughs> Thank you, Missy. <laughs> I know Jesse's out there somewhere. I saw Jesse. Her. I saw Lisa Cove. Where's Lisa Cove? There's Jesse. Jesse, will you unmute yourself? There we go. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Oh my gosh, what a magical experience to be able to sit in my house and watch all of you and all the hard work that you put into your videos and just the sacrifice and effort it takes to compete in a pageant. I'm so beyond impressed. I'm so grateful to be a part of this system and this sisterhood. Um, my experience as Mrs. New York 2015 was incredible. I look back on it, it seems like a lifetime ago already, just five years, but I cherish every single memory and every single relationship that I made during that time. So. Good luck to all of you. You look fantastic. I'm just so grateful to be here and watching you and I'm cheering all of you on from home. Oh, thank you, Jesse. <laughs> Lisa Cove, are you here? Hi, Ray. Lisa Cove, this is your 2002. Can you hear me? Hi, yes, we can hear you. Okay, I'm sorry. I am in a rainstorm driving home from Cleveland. So actually my girlfriend's driving while I'm watching the, the pageant on my phone. Um, I'm so proud of all of you. This was a really difficult year for everyone. Diane, you've done a great job trying to uh, live our lives in COVID and, and still be in it 100% and, and live your dream, ladies. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing the evening gowns. You all did a great walk, beautiful swimsuits, and I'm just so honored to be a part of this family. themselves, the swimsuits, and the evening wear is definitely my favorite, and the on-stage interviews, or Zoom interviews. So good luck, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Allie. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Allie. So leave it to one sister to push the other one, right? <laughs> <laughs> to nudge the other one. Thanks, Jess. <laughs> I was just texting Jessica before. I'm like, thank God I put some makeup on. I didn't know if we were going to be on screen. So anyway, um, but it's all about being adaptable, and you guys are all terrific. I am, I'm, I'm so impressed. I'm so grateful, Diane, that you put this on so this way we could all be a part of it and be safely um, able to cheer you guys on. Um, you are really incredible. It's a great, great group this year, and I'm really looking forward to whoever um, our new sisters will be. You will be supported. You'll be loved by us, and um, looking forward to be able to cheer you on this year. Um, and I really, again, I, I just think 
I think that you all represent being able to be adaptable and are going to be, whoever wins is going to be an incredible leader. So I'm excited. I'm excited to cheer you on <laughs> from behind the screen with some chips and some uh, seltzer water. <laughs> Hi, guys. Is there anyone else? Anyone? Scrolling through real quick. Introduce some of our other special guests that we have here. I know I saw on the screen of our current Mrs. America, Natalie Winslow. Natalie, are you on? Yes. Katie? Hi. 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 Thank you so much for being here tonight. We're so grateful that we could, we could have this virtual and it's easy for you to be at your house and join us. Did you have any um, advice or words for our contestants today? Absolutely. First of all, Diane, this is such an amazing experience. I'm so blessed and happy to be here. You guys did amazing. All of you, your energy, you look lovely in your swimsuits. I'm so excited to see you in gown. Like Allison said, you are all going to be loved by us. This is a sisterhood. This is not the end of your journey. This is just the beginning. And I can't wait to see who our new sister is, who I get to meet in a couple of months or weeks or <laughs> whatever. But um. Sending you all virtual hugs and the best of luck to all of you. Thanks, Natalie. Um, next, we might have our current Miss for America, Cassie Perkins. I wasn't sure if she's able to join us, but she's been a very close friend of mine for, throughout this whole year. So, so happy that we can have Cassie hopefully here today, but if not, I'm sure we'll be able to catch up soon. And then, I don't think she is on. So we'll jump to our last special guest, former Mrs. DC America and one of our um, current sponsors this year, the girls are lucky for you, uh, Raquel Riley Thomas. I know she was on earlier. Do you have any uh, words or uh, encouragement or anything to say to the ladies before you watch their videos? Um, yes, well, actually, I want to thank Diane so much for, for having me here today. Actually, I'm a former Mrs. Marilyn. Just want to correct that, especially with my director, Lorette, being on, on here. We want to make sure she is happy. <laughs> but, um, and uh, first runner-up for 2011, so uh, for Mrs. America. But first and foremost, I want to thank each and every one of you all for being here today for Diane. This is really a challenging time for directors to get these uh, these videos and to get their, you know, get all the ladies uh, in in place so that they can go ahead and still get their crowns. And so it's very important, um, you know, for you all to support her. And I appreciate her so much, her kindness, her love. And um, just because we've been friends for so long as um, as we, um, some of you may know already that I did start a new cosmetic line um, called Raquel Riley Thomas, and I did name a lipstick after Diane just because of our friendship. So, Diane, you're an amazing woman. You have amazing contestants. You lead with such grace and beauty and kindness and love, and it shows in, in the ladies that uh, follow your lead. So I appreciate, you know, being your friend and being your sister for life. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm crying. <laughs> oh boy. Thank you all. Thanks, Emily. And thanks, Kate. Great job to all of our VIPs. Okay, well, traditionally, evening gown competition has been the most beautiful part of the show, and ours is no exception. Our videographer, Vito Taverna, and broadcast engineer, Vicki. Waco will now show us the pre-recorded contestant evening gown videos. This will count for 25% of each contestant's total score. Mrs. Brooklyn Marjorie Vale is a member of the Star Legacy Foundation an organization that advocates for families who have suffered a stillbirth. She also volunteers with Propelled Media, as well as New York Cares and New York Books through Bars. Mrs. Dutchess County, Dr. Jackie Berry, is a cognitive scientist recently returning from Egypt 
where she was the Fulbright Scholar studying interface switching and Arabic-English bilinguals at the American University in Cairo. One of her class exercises became an international brand called Find Your Carrot after COVID-19 happened. Dr. Jackie has since presented this to the U.S. Embassy in Cairo, the Fulbright Commission in Egypt, and the School of Continuing Education for the American University in Cairo. Dr. Jackie is also active in her community and serves on the vestry board for her church. Dr. Jackie has recently become part of the Artificial Intelligence for Africa movement and recently served on a panel for the United Nations in Geneva, Switzerland. United Nations. Mrs. Electric City, Kate Boydston, is an advocate for people on the spectrum. This has been a passion of hers since she started in education 10 years ago. She started a Be Kind initiative this year to show others how their kindness, inclusivity, nurturing nature, and dependability can help change the lives of those with disabilities. She believes that she can educate others about autism spectrum disorder in order to help them understand their role in today's society. As a special education teacher, Kate's priority is to help her peers be inclusive and teach our future generations to be kind. Sheila McKinney, Mrs. Empire State, never stops thinking of new ways to give back. Through her work with Long Island Cares and Feeding America, she implemented a new charity called Let's Feed New York using extreme couponing. Food banks critically need certain food items all of the time. And through careful planning, she has developed a way to buy large quantities of these items for very little money. She developed a model to help with budgeting and a business proposal for partnering with supermarkets. She is currently recruiting volunteers to teach them her secret to help feed New York and one day America. She truly believes that we can change our world by showing random acts of kindness. Mrs. Gotham City, Monta M.J. Jabowski, was taught early on that being in a position to give back is a privilege. Over the recent months, she has supported various causes helping to bring food to those in need. One of her favorite charities is God's Love We Deliver. Going forward, she will continue on those and other charitable initiatives in partnership with ABC VIP New York events. Mrs. Great in New York, Yasmeen Breckenridge is actively involved with the Madison Square Boys and Girls Club, where she is a Madison Council member and fundraising committee member. As a Madison Council member, Yasmin mentors young children in under-resourced areas by helping each member make progress towards personal and academic development. In addition, through her platform, hashtag confidence comes from within, Yasmin specifically mentors young girls experiencing economic hardships. She has successfully helped several young children reach their academic potential and even graduate from college. Yasmin is committed to 60 hours in community service yearly and have helped raise thousands of dollars for several organizations. As a result, she's been recognized by the New York State Governor, Andrew Cuomo. After receiving a call from the New York Blood Center that a donation of hers had been used to save three people's lives in one week, Mrs. Long Island became a frequent O-negative universal blood donor. Altruism is at the forefront of her life. She and her family make large clothing and shoe donations to big brothers and big sisters of Long Island. And as a longtime corporate professional, she also takes the time to donate business attire to dress for success. With Habitat for Humanity, she has helped build homes through the organization's affordable housing program. She has been an annual AIDS Walk New York participant for a decade and is the founder and facilitator of social media support group, Working Mothers Squared. This is Dominique Dixon. Mrs. Metropolitan, Jessica Fabus Chang. Jessica is a nurse advocate with Parent Project Muscular Dystrophy, an organization dedicated to advocacy, research, and care. Each year, Jessica travels to Washington, D.C 
to fight for families contending with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Her platform, Mission to End Duchenne, was inspired by the incredible community of families she has met over her time as an advocate. Her platform is dedicated to prepare new advocates to tell their personal stories with confidence. She believes your story is a powerful advocacy tool. Jessica's hope is that more advocates will raise their voice and make an impact for generations to come. This is Jessica Fabus Chang, Mrs. Metropolitan. Mrs. Mrs. Onondaga County, Katie Flaherty, an advocate for women's health and the founder of Shine with Courage Foundation, providing public education and patient support so women no longer have to struggle in silence with female health issues. By building public education and awareness, she starts to shine a light into those shadows and strip away the stigma of female health. Katie will continue partnering with healthcare professionals, raise awareness in the community, and expand her mentorship program. Her mission is to provide peace of mind, motivation, and counsel to those suffering to give them strength and confidence to overcome their fears of healing, giving them the courage to shine. Miss Capital District for America, Gabrielle Wright, has always been an advocate for people with special needs. She's participated in her school's Best Buddy program and continues to attend events and enroll in programs run by the Centers for Disability Services. Miss Capital District for America, Gabrielle Wright. We now welcome back Miss Empire State for America, Amy Burmaster. Amy has a passion for working with children and knows there is no work as rewarding as lending a helping hand to those in need. In high school, Amy volunteered her time at community events, dressing up as Disney's Elsa to raise money for Relay for Life. Amy also holds a strong belief that one should always feel safe in their personal relationships. She channels that belief into her work raising awareness for both sexual assault and domestic and interpersonal violence. She uses her voice and platform to garner support for community-based women's shelters and empower survivors in any and all ways she is able. Amy is grateful for the confidence and strong community of women she has gained through pageantry and hopes to empower other women to find the same. And hopes to empower other... Ms. Fairport, Lexi Hearn, works at an independent living facility as a server and enjoys the connections she makes with the residents there. She's recently gone to some other facilities in her area to spend time with the residents there. Last summer, she got the chance to go play her fiddle for residents at a memory care facility. She's a volunteer at the Town Historical Society and loves learning about local history, especially the DeLand family. She's an advocate for overdose and lung cancer awareness, two causes she would love to end the stigma around, especially so she can honor the memories of her Grammy, Susan, who lost her fight to lung cancer in May 2019, as well as the memory of her uncle Ricky, who lost his battle with drug addiction in May of 2017. Miss Heart of New York for America, Cassie Paradise, is a senior nursing student at Wagner College and is a proud member of the Spring 2020 Dean's List. She serves as Secretary of the Student Nurses Association and is a member of the National Society of Leadership and Success. Professionally, she works as a certified medical assistant and works at an OBGYN office and hopes to work as a registered nurse in labor and delivery. Cassie currently serves as a volunteer with ACT Care Group and spends time with residents at nursing homes. Miss Heart of New York has volunteered with many organizations in her community, some being Tim Tebow's Night to Shine and On Your Mark. Cassie is a part of an all-volunteer cast as a Rich Manette in the annual St. George Theatre Christmas show for the last 16 years. Miss New York City, Alexandra Sprague. 
Alexandra is passionate about creating an accessible and inclusive world where people of all abilities can have equal access to their surroundings. She volunteers with Open Style Lab to create adaptive clothing kits, music for autism to provide musical opportunities for families, the Girl Scouts of America to design accessible playgrounds, and helps organize inclusive fashion shows. Wow, ladies, we're very proud of each of you and what you've achieved over the last several months in preparation for this first ever virtual pageant. All of you look so amazing in your evening gowns. Congratulations. I am now going to ask each of the married, the Mrs. contestants, a question out of my fishbowl. And we're going to start with contestant number one, and that is Mrs. Brooklyn. Everyone, please mute your camera and, and let's uh, go on speaker view. Okay, Mrs. Brooklyn, what makes you comfortable in your own skin and helps you maintain a strong sense of self? What makes me feel comfortable in my own skin is I know that I am created by God, the creator, and I am perfect even in my imperfections. Um, I'm created exactly how I'm supposed to be, and I know that whatever it is that I need to grow in, um, God will allow me to learn through my trials and tribulations. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, contestant number one, Mrs. Brooklyn. Next up, we have contestant number two, Mrs. Duchess County. Hi. Hey. Okay, Mrs. Duchess County, your question is, what advice about life would you give to a younger you? Don't settle. And I would give this advice to everyone. Now's the time to really find your carrot. Don't pick something you're just kind of good at. Pick something that only you contribute. Everyone has a God-given talent that belongs to them. I'm an ambassador. And I love to put myself out there and shine my light on those issues that are important to me. Right now, it's helping people become the best version of themselves. And pageantry is a way to usher that in. So do not settle. Only be the best version of yourself. Great. Thank you so much, contestant number two, Mrs. Duchess County. Next up, we have contestant number three, Mrs. Electric City. Okay, Mrs. Electric City. What event in your life has had the biggest influence on the person that you are today? So the biggest event would be meeting my husband in college. I was a nursing major. I thought that that was the way that I was going to help people. And he supported me in changing to education for my master's. And since then, he's been so supportive and he has helped me with the Be Kind campaign that I started this year. And together over the next year, being Mrs. New York America, I would go to the libraries and help read books about inclusion to children to help open up about conversations that might be difficult to have because every student needs a teacher who understands them. Great, thank you so much. Contestant number three, Mrs. Electric City. Next up, contestant number four is Mrs. Empire State. Okay, Mrs. Empire State, how do you describe beauty? What is the meaning of a beautiful woman in your opinion? For me, a beautiful woman, it comes from within. It's the whole package. It's a combination of mind, caring, being empathetic for other people, and looking at people who are, have less than what you have and helping them. The true mark to me of somebody who's beautiful is somebody who has an amazing heart, who doesn't care what someone has, and is always willing to put themselves out there and help others, especially those who can't do anything for them. That will make you feel so good and really show your heart. Great, thank you so much. Contestant number four, Mrs. Empire State. Next up, we have contestant number five, Mrs. Gotham City. Okay. Mrs. Gotham City, what made you choose the Mrs. America system? I am so happy to be here and I am very passionate about an 
empowering women of all ages. I think mentoring is a wonderful thing as well. I hope to be the best, Mrs. New York, and I am thrilled because I am representing an age range, 60 is the new 30s, and I also hope to inspire and empower women of my age range. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, contestant number five, Mrs. Gotham City. Next up, we have contestant number six, Mrs. Greater New York. Okay, Mrs. Greater New York, what do you feel are the three reasons that would make you the best choice as Mrs. New York? I am hardworking, I am a strong public speaker, and I am charismatic. My Caribbean upbringings, my lifelong experiences, and my commitment to my community has allowed me to connect with people from all walks of life. I am a direct product of the positive impact that a person can make through community service. If it was not for my former volunteer track and field coach, I don't know where I would be today. Which led me to creating my platform, hashtag confidence comes from within in which I advocate the academic and professional programs in young adults and children who are homeless and experiencing economic hardships. Over 2 million people within the state of New York live in poverty. And as a result of the recent pandemic, over 4 million people are unemployed. My platform not only touches families within the state of New York, but it reaches families throughout the entire United States. If I were to be your next Mrs. New York America, I would transform my 12 month plan that I have in place as a local title holder, which includes not only continuing to advocate for my platform, hashtag confidence comes from within, while working with Diane and the Miss America organization, but it also includes recruiting more women to join our organization, seeking more sponsors while maintaining the current sponsorship. And I plan to do that through my community service involvement, whether that's virtual or in person, through my business contacts, as well as my social media page, which I have over 15,000 followers. And the fourth thing that I would hope would be to bring the crown home from nationals to the great state of New York. With the support of my family, I'm committed and ready for the challenge. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, contestant number six, Mrs. Greater New York. Next up, we have contestant number seven, Mrs. Long Island. Mrs. Long Island, share with us one of your most embarrassing moments and what did you learn from it? Appropriately, my most embarrassing moment was at a pageant. I was about nine years old competing in one of those beautiful hoop skirt dresses that the young girls wear at that age. I was competing in evening gown. I went to do a step turn and I fell and tumbled right onto my hands and knees. And I took a moment and at nine years old, I was able to realize right away that I could get up and finish my routine with a smile on my face and knowing that I was empowered by, the, by this mistake, even at that young age. And I've always remembered that moment. And I think Mrs. New York America should be as New York tough as that nine-year-old. Thank you. Thank you so much, contestant number seven, Mrs. Long Island. Next up, we have contestant number nine, Mrs. Metropolitan. Okay, Mrs. Metropolitan, why is your platform important to you? And if crowned Mrs. New York, how will you promote it? My platform is called Mission to End Duchenne. And it's so important to me because my cousin was diagnosed with this form of muscular dystrophy about 18 years ago. And over the years, I have been able to work with families struggling with this disorder. If I were crowned as Mrs. New York America, I would love to promote this platform via these awesome things that we have in Parent Project Muscular Dystrophy, which is my nonprofit. It's called Family Connect Groups, and they're dotted all over the United States, including New York. And whether it's virtual or in person, hopefully, I will go to these uh, meetings and I'll promote my platform where I teach 
families how to synthesize their personal story so they can tell it for advocacy purposes, whether that's on Capitol Hill or in a local high school or to even to their own family. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, contestant number nine, Mrs. Metropolitan. Last up, we have contestant number 10, Mrs. Onondaga County. Okay, Mrs. Onondaga County, what is your goal for particip participating in Mrs. New York America 2020? My goal for competing in Mrs. New York America 2020 is to really expand my platform, Heal, Empower, Reclaim, where I'm helping young girls and women overcome trauma by providing resources to my board of directors, Shine with Courage Foundation nonprofit. It's very important to me because I have, I have personally been through these experiences and I need to be a voice for women and young children that do not have a voice. And for example, a woman from Lebanon messaged me on Facebook. She was excited to be a part of my mission. And unfortunately with the country's laws and religious laws, she is not able to voice her concerns for female health. So I think it is my mission and duty to expand these resources throughout the state and the country, as well as just as Mrs. New York America also squashed the misconception of pageantry. Pageantry is not about gowns and makeup or looks. It is about yourself and overcoming trauma and experiences. And just meeting these women have been such an amazing inspiration to me and a sisterhood that I will never find anywhere else. And I'm just so happy to be here. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, contestant number 10, Mrs. Onondaga County. Congratulations, ladies. Great job to all of the 2020 Mrs. New York America contestants. Thanks, Kate. I just can't believe how fast this is moving. The judges have a super difficult decision to make coming up. It's now my turn to read some questions to our Miss contestants. And now I'll get my fishbowl. And we'll start with contestant 11, Gabby. Your question is, what is one goal you would want to achieve in the next year as Miss New York for America? To put it simply, I love New York. I've lived here my whole life, and it's no secret that New York has been hit pretty hard with everything going on. And I would love to get out there and start to just help as much as I can. That would be my main goal, with everything going on. I wanna help as much as I possibly can. Thank you. Now we'll move on to contestant number 12. Amy, your question is, why did you choose to compete for the title of Miss New York for America? I was really inspired by you, Emily, and all the amazing work that you've been able to do with your platform, Empowering Women in STEM. And I hope to be able to do the same thing going forward this year with my platform, Domestic Violence Awareness. Domestic violence has unfortunately seen a great spike throughout the COVID pandemic as people are more stressed out, stuck at home, and unable to reach the resources they need. And this opportunity would give me a much greater chance to reach a much broader audience and raise awareness for domestic violence. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, next, contestant 13. Here we go. All right, Lexi. What is the first thing you would do if crowned Miss New York for America? Absolute first thing I do is convince my parents to drive me two hours to my hometown so I could go see my grandfather and my family down there and my grandma's grave and just show them how far I have come and how far I will go with the title. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have contestant number 14. Cassie, here's your question. How would you combine the job of Miss New York for America with your current life? So as a nursing student in school, we're taught to always balance everything. So I'm very good at juggling. I'm very good at time management. I'm a little OCD as well. So that also helps a little bit to really balance the job and just make a schedule, follow that and put your heart into everything. That's something that I take with, with great pride that I take put everything with my heart and I would balance it the best that I could. Great, thanks. And now last but not least, contestant number 15, Alex. 
What are two reasons why you should be crowned the next Miss New York for America? First reason that I got to talk about yesterday in my interview is my heart. I live my platform every single day as an occupational therapist working with preschoolers with special needs. I'm so passionate about advocating for this population that I committed to spending my whole life doing it. Um, the second reason I believe that I'd make a great Miss New York for America is that I grew up in Utica, New York. I spent my summers in the Adirondacks. I went to school on the Southern Tier and now I'm in Brooklyn. So I truly understand what it means to be a New Yorker in all regions. And I understand those different cultures, um, which I can use as Miss New York traveling all across the state. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, all of your contestants for this year's pageant, Mrs. New York America, Mrs. New York American, and Miss New York for America. Excellent job. Thank you so much, Emily, Miss New York for America, and Kate, Mrs. New York. Great job on your answers to all of the contestants. And thank you to our judges for these amazing questions. All of these questions came from our star-studded panel of judges. So thank you judges for your hard work judging these remarkable, empowering and inspiring ladies. So now we would like to show everyone the winner's prizes and they're not only the winner's prizes, but a lot of our contestants will get these prizes as well. So would our broadcast engineer, Vicki Wake up, like to show our prize list? <laughs> That she put together for our VIP staff uh, for all of my my last minute prep peeps. So Vicky's going to show that video. Just want to give a huge shout out to my husband Roy, Julie, my mom Vito, and Vicky. Thank you so much for your help, your tremendous help the last few days. And now we'd like to introduce the staff. to my staff and VIP. <laughs> and now Vito put together an awesome sponsor video. Thank you. Little shout out to Joe Valls Formal Wear. I love my dress. Thank you so much to Valls and for all your support the last 10 years. And Raquel Riley for your cosmetics and Vito Taverna. Um, thank you so much. And so she put together a little sponsor video for all of you. <laughs>
much, Peta and Vicki. All right. Well, thank you so much, sponsors. I just heard from photographer Christopher Cardwell in Rochester, New York. He wants to sponsor all three winners. So he's going to do a photo shoot with your crown and sashes. So get to Rochester as quickly as possible next week so you can have your photo shoot sessions with Christopher Cardwell. Now, if everyone can go back on uh, speaker view and mute your phones, and we'll go back on speaker view here. Is everyone on speaker view? Mute your phones. Okay. Can everyone hear me okay? Good. All good. Okay. Well, thank you to our kind of generous sponsors. In just a few moments, we will have a new Mrs. New York, Mrs. New York American, and Miss New York for America. But first, last year, Kate Schneider and Emily Mahana captured the hearts of all of New York. Their charm, intelligence, beauty, and personal magnetism that have captivated us this past year will keep us in our memories for years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, the farewell videos from our beautiful reigning queens, Kate and Emily. <laughs> Words can't describe the feelings that came over me when I was announced as your Mrs. New York America 2019. It was a moment I will never forget for the rest of my life. Looking out into the audience and seeing the pride and tears on my husband's face and watching my mom literally drop to her knees in the audience, screaming with excitement, are images forever burned into my memory. The minute the crown was placed on my head, I hit the ground running, partnering with multiple organizations and participating in countless events throughout the state. I'm so proud to have had opportunities to raise funds and awareness with No Kid Hungry, Action for Healthy Kids, the Food Bank, YMCA, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, Best Buddies, the Salvation Army, National Eating Disorders Association, American Cancer Society, the Damien Center, Autism Speaks, and the Garden of Dreams. It was an honor to represent New York at Mrs. America, placing in the top 15 and coming home with experiences and friendships to last a lifetime. Finishing first runner-up at Mrs. World was truly a dream come true, and the icing on the cake of an unforgettable year. To my pageant coach extraordinaire, Corinne, my hair and makeup squad, Nicole, Caitlin, and Jake, my soul sister, Rebecca, all of the queens who came before me, the unbeatable New York team, and all of my friends and family. Thank you for giving me the priceless tools and confidence to let my true self shine, for making me look and feel like a redheaded goddess on the state, national, and international stages, and for being the best friends and mentors a girl could ever ask for. To my new family, Emily and Diane, thank you both for making this year more incredible than I ever could have imagined. I'm forever grateful to have you in my life. You're such inspiring, beautiful inside and out women, and I love you so much. Mom, my number one fangirl, Dad and Jimmy, I couldn't have done any of this without your endless love and support. You always have my back, no matter how crazy and impossible my dreams may seem. And for that, I can never thank you enough. I love you with all my heart. To my successor, get ready for a year you'll never forget. Soak up every moment, serve fearlessly, and make the most of each day. This is your time to shine. It has been the greatest honor to serve as your queen, New York. And today, I will hang up my crown and sash with pride for everything I have accomplished and with memories to last a lifetime. With love and gratitude, Kate Schneider, Mrs. New York America, 2019. Wow, being the first ever Miss New York for America has been a true honor, and I will always be so thankful for everything this organization has provided me. They truly embody their motto, we are family. Diane and Kate will forever be the most fabulous big sisters. The 2019 Miss for America class will always share a special bond from our week in Vegas. I've never been a part of a group so inviting and inspirational. Thank you, David and Elaine Marmel, for creating the best pageant for Miss contestants. I feel so blessed to have been able to spend this past year as Miss New York for America. I was able to travel all across the state and country promoting my platform, attending charity events, and supporting my pageant sisters. It has been incredible to visit the various schools, libraries, and museums empowering women in STEM and watching children get so excited about math and science. Seeing their genuine interest in STEM projects makes it all worth it. Thank you to all of the places that have allowed me to come and share my message. I'll always remember giving back to my state and especially my local community that has helped make me who I am today. 
Just because I'm no longer Miss New York for America doesn't mean the service ends for me. The crown and sash help me get a foot in the door where I may not have been able to otherwise, but that doesn't mean I need the crown and sash to keep volunteering and educating others and continuing the work I have done this year. I have so many people to thank who have made this whole year possible. First, to my dad, one of my biggest supporters this year. While he can't be here today, I know he is here with me as my angel and will be cheering me on from heaven forever. To my mom, my brother, and my lovely boyfriend, thank you for putting up with me and the craziness this year. It was a wild year and I'm so thankful to have you by my side. I honestly could not have done it without each of you and your constant love. To my new sisters, Diane and Kate, thank you for showing me what it means to be a powerful, spunky, and well-spoken woman. I will love you forever, and I can't wait for our next girls' trip. To my Miss for America sister queens near and far, I'm so thankful we were able to share this year together. I couldn't have imagined a better group of women as the inaugural class of queens. To Kareem, I couldn't recommend a better packing coach. You helped me prepare in every single way and helped me achieve my goal of placing in the top 15. You are the best. To everyone who helped me be so glam this year, the one and only Kelly Wisniewski, Wendy Carlson, Nicole West, Pete Foster, and Pian Tarusha from PG Photography. Thank you for capturing the real me and allowing that to shine. And lastly, to my sponsors, Abscope Environmental, Callahan Flanagan Smith & Stock, Dinosaur Barbecue, Element on Water, Greg Holler Projects, Jessica L. Beauty, Joe Ball's Former Wear, Monroe Med Spa, and a special shout out to my alma mater, Syracuse University, and my current employer, Barton and the Judas. This is definitely a condensed list, but thank you to every single person who's helped make this year one of the best of my life. To the next Miss New York for America, congratulations. You're in for such an amazing year. Trust me, you will be busy, and at times it may seem overwhelming, but embrace it. Embrace every opportunity that presents itself and make sure you have no regrets by the time you're in my shoes next year. I'll be rooting for you the entire time. Remember, a queen doesn't win because she needs the crown. She wins because the crown needs her. It's been the experience of a lifetime representing New York this year. When one door closes, another one opens, and I just can't wait to see what that next experience will be for me. Forever your Miss New York for America 2019, Emily Mahana. Thank you so much, my beautiful reigning queens. Kate and Emily, you have just done an exceptional job representing our state. Um, Lisa Cobe, I believe you're sharing your screen, so can you click on to not enable your share screen? Lisa Cove? Lisa Cove, can you please click on disable share screen? Lisa Cove, can you click on, let's see here. Let's try to fix this here. Okay, I'm just gonna mute myself real quick. I think we're all in speaker view, Diane. I think it looks okay on my end. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just on Diane's screen, but I see everyone. Same. <laughs> okay, I think I fixed it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Kate and Emily. You have done an exceptional job representing our state of New York this year. I love you both so much. My beautiful reigning queens, Kate and Emily. Thank you. Well, I think we have some special awards to present now. I've just received the text and emails from Peter, our auditor from RDG CPAs. Thank you so much, Peter. And let's start with the 2020 Miss New York for America contestants. So we're, we're gonna start with our Miss New York for America. If everyone can please mute. And then uh, the winner will actually do a speech and then we'll get to our Mrs. Ladies. So for Miss New York for America 2020, the photogenic award goes to 
Alexandra Harvey Sprague, contestant number 15, Miss New York City. Our Miss Congeniality Award, go, uh, award goes to, sponsored by Jessica Lahr. Miss Congeniality goes to Lexi Hearn. Miss Fairport for America. Ladies and gentlemen, contest number 13 won Miss Congeniality. The Director's Award for Miss, that's a called Special Place in My Heart. This is one someone I really connected with and I just adore. And that Director's Award goes to Miss Empire State, contestant number 12, Amy Burmaster. The winner of the People's Choice Award goes to, and this is another very special award, portion of our proceeds will go to the Mrs. America and Miss for America Charity of Choice, Victoria's Voice, and her charity of choice. And that award goes to, again, Miss Fairport, Lexi Hearn. Congratulations, Lexi. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before I announce the first runner-up, let me remind you that the role of the first runner-up is very important. Should for any reason Miss New York for America is unable to fulfill her obligation, the first runner-up will assume her title and position. Ladies and gentlemen, the first runner-up for Miss New York 2020 is, first runner-up, Miss Heart of New York, Cassie Paradise. The winner of the 2020 New York for America is, drum roll please, <laughs> contestant number 11, Miss Capital District for America, Gabrielle Wright. Congratulations. Gabrielle, would you like to say a few words? I so wish I could be in person with everybody right now. <laughs> it's kind of stinks that I'm not, but thank you so much to the judges and everybody. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm so grateful and I can't wait to start my year. So, <laughs> Congratulations. All right. Now it's time to present the awards for the 2020 Mrs. New York for America and Miss New York, Mrs. New York American contestants. Awards first, then our runners up, then our winner, and after our winner speech, then we have a new surprise. We're gonna announce the winner's first runner up who will be crowned Mrs. New York American. So we're gonna have two winners. So we're gonna go awards first, then our runners ups, then our winner, and then uh, we're gonna announce the winner's first runner up, Mrs. New York American. And let me just say that the runners up scores were very, very close. So we're gonna have a top six. Top six, ladies and gentlemen. This is really, really, really exciting. So our winners, both ladies will go on to nationals to Las Vegas later this year. Okay, got the text, got everything here. Okay, ladies, I'll start with the awards. The Photogenic Award goes to Sheila McKinney, Mrs. Empire State. The Congeniality Award goes to, sponsored by Jessica, Kate Boydston, Mrs. Electric City. Congratulations, Kate. The Director's Award goes to, and I really connected with two contestants. They are just so sweet, got their paperwork on time, really used like great communication throughout their reign. Um, two director's awards go to Sheila McKinney, Mrs. Empire State, and Mrs. Long Island, Dominique Dixon. Thank you, ladies. Congratulations. The Fabulous Face Award goes to, that is a contest we did online, and a portion of the proceeds will go towards Victoria's Voice. Another portion will go towards their charity of choice. And the Fabulous Face Award goes to Monta M. J. This Mrs. Gotham City. Our Scholarship Award goes to Katie Flaherty, Mrs. Onondaga County. And the Visibility Award goes to the person who's done the most community service, and that goes to Kate Boydston, Mrs. Electric City. Congratulations, Kate. 
All right, now we are gonna announce our runners up. All right, our fifth runner up. Fifth runner up is, drum roll please. <laughs> our fifth runner up is MJ Monta Chalkowski. Congratulations, Mrs. Gotham City. Our fourth runner up is, we'll do our own drum rolls. <laughs> fourth runner up is Dr. Jackie Berry, Mrs. Dutchess County. Congratulations, Jackie. Our third runner up is, Third runner up is Kate Boydston, Mrs. Electric City. Our second runner up is, drum roll please. <laughs> Jessica Fabus Chang, Mrs. Metropolitan. All right, let's get to the winner. And then we'll announce our Mrs. New York American. Ladies and gentlemen, our 2020 Mrs. New York America is Mrs. Greater NY, Yasmin Gums Breckridge. Congratulations. <laughs> Yasmin, would you like to say a few words? You can unmute yourself and you can speak. Can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you to all the judges. Thank you to Diane. Thank you. It's, this has been a journey. Um, I want to thank my husband, my daughter, and my sister and the Carey family for their support. I want to thank all my coaches. And specifically, I want to thank the woman who is more than a coach to me who told me this week that I needed to believe in myself because if I didn't, the judges wouldn't. And that's Missy. I love you so much. Thank you so much. I'm excited. Congratulations, Mrs. Mrs. New York. <gasps> All right, we have one more award and that is our 2020 Mrs. New York American. Vicki, drum roll, please. <laughs> Our Mrs. New York American is Mrs. Brooklyn, Marjorie Vale. Marjorie, would you like to say a few words, please? I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, thank you, Diane, for having putting together such a great, great, great great pageant. I always love to come back because of you and your staff. They're awesome. I want to thank my husband uh, and my son who supported me through this journey. Um, thank you, Kate and Emily, for being such a great example of what queens are and should be. Um, I look forward to working with Yasmin and um, Miss, Miss New York for America. I'm really excited. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mrs. Brooklyn, congratulations to our three winners. Yasmin, Marjorie, and Gabby. Congratulations. And thank you all for attending on our first Zoom virtual pageant. We made history, everyone. History of the making right here. We'll see you all soon. Thank you. Congratulations.